And it was a blind choice. But what I want to point out is God gives us a view. He gives us a view of our choice. He doesn't have a blind choice, but an open choice. He shows us, and then He lets us choose. Right? And so, we've already looked at death. And I want to, I want to point out that you know, that was one of the two choices, wasn't it? Okay. So let's go. Um, first of all, like I said, I want to end on a happy note. So we'll, we'll start out with Satan. And what does he have to offer? What does Satan have to offer us? Okay. Well, the first thing I want to point out is, does, has anybody ever heard of the term Beelzebub? That's in the Bible. Who, who is Beelzebub? In the New Testament, Beelzebub was a reference to Satan. He calls him the prince of devils. Uh, in fact, that's in Luke 11, 15. Now, they were claiming that Jesus was involved with Beelzebub, and we know he wasn't. But that was their accusation. But Beelzebub actually goes back further than Jesus' time. It goes back to uh, the kings. Um, in 2 Kings 1, 2, we find a really interesting little statement uh, this king falls down through a lattice from his upper chamber when he was in Samaria and he became sick obviously he fell and he's probably injured and it says that he sent a message and he said to, to go and inquire of Beelzebub and I, I was like whoa that's in the Old Testament I didn't realize that and it says that he was the god of Ekron in other words it's not an Israelite god because they only had one right so this is Beelzebub, who was a god of the Ekronites, or however you want to say that. Well, anyway, and the story goes, uh, and I'm not going to get, I don't have time to go into it too much, but the story goes that the prophet of God comes to him and says, if you had to ask from God, you might have lived. But anyway, okay, so what does Beelzebub mean? Well, it's actually Chaldean, and it means Baal, which means Lord, okay, Baal of the fly. Why would you call a god ball of the fly? Why would you call him that? Because he's a god of death. See, flies are around when stuff dies. So we're talking about a god of death. It's also in another translation, you know, uh, scholars are always kind of bickering over stuff. Another translation is the dung god. Okay? He's referred to as the dung god. What is dung? Dung is garbage. Okay? So he's a god of garbage. So Beelzebub is referred to as the God of the dead here in the Bible. Lord of the flies. Um, so, what does the Lord of the flies bring to us? Look at here. Uh, the first thing that strikes me in our society, and is definitely a direct root from the fact that Satan has really grabbed hold of uh, the people in our country, is the fact that Satan has a tendency to skew the vision of what is beautiful, what we understand to be beautiful. Look back over all societies and you'll see this, and I, and I will get into that. But why, my first question though before we get into that is, why would Satan care how we see ourselves? Why would he want us to see ourselves differently? Well, the, the answer to that is actually, uh, there's my why. The answer to that is actually in Genesis, Genesis 1, So God created man in what image? His own image. Now, who does Satan, who is Satan against? God. And so why would he want us to maintain the image of God? He's against that, right? So, let me go, I'm going to read the rest of it. In God's image created he him, male and female created he them. So God made Adam in his image, and therefore, as our forefather, we all gained that image, right? So the, the problem is, is Satan works on different people to, to skew, to bend, to twist their view of themselves and of beauty. In this picture, you notice that's a very well-developed, nice girl. But when she looks in the mirror, she sees a very fat person. Now that, that, that can't be anybody but Satan, right? So Satan's offering a view of yourself that is not beautiful. Not seeing what God sees which is seeing you as a beautiful person. Um, here's an interesting thing that I've run across. Has anybody seen the, the sh oddly shaped skulls that they find, especially in South America? Very oddly shaped. Well, the reason those skulls are all elongated 
is because in the Mayan society, Mayans are really in the news right now, I don't know if you've noticed, with 2012 and that whole uh, thing coming up. Well, the Mayans actually thought it was beautiful to put things on the baby's head, and you'll see the pictures at the bottom there, to cause the baby's head to elongate. And, and I mean, they're stuck with a funny-shaped head for the rest of their life. The parents actually did this to uh, some of Mayans, society. So, I, and, and I use the Mayans because if you look into not just Mayans, but Incans, and all those, and, uh, those uh, Native American tribes down there, they were into uh, human sacrifice. I mean, you name it, these guys were pretty rough people. And so I, I wanted to, sh I'm, I'm trying to point out that not only is it happening in our society, but it happened in other societies that gave themselves to uh, Beelzebub, to Satan. Okay? What also comes from, the, from Satan is the tendency to hurt yourself. Uh, you notice this guy, he's, he's, you think he's dressed up for Halloween? Uh, no. I, I guarantee you he's not. And notice what he's doing with that knife. They... They, yeah, he's cutting himself. Did you know that they've done studies and the percentage of, chill, of, of teens cutting themselves is really on the rise? Why would you do that? Why would you hurt yourself that way? It's the influence of Satan. The, the Lord of the dead. Okay? And I say Lord with a little L. Okay. Uh, there's, an, there's a story in the uh, Bible that actually has some of this in it. Uh, First Kings... Chapter 18 is where Elijah and uh, goes up against the prophets of Baal. You, do you remember that? And he's, he, he uh, has a, a, a sacrifice, and they have a sacrifice. And he says, okay, he gives them the first. He lets them go first, and he says, pray to Baal, or Baal, however you want to say it. Pray to him, and have him like the sacrifice. And they pray, and they pray, and they pray. And, and it's this verse comes into that it says and they cried aloud and cut themselves after their manner so this is something they did with knives and with lances till the blood gushed out upon them so they are cutting themselves and doing all this thing connected with the worship of who Baal or Baal okay so again we see that with Satan comes this tendency to do things like hurt yourself all right um we see it in society today. Yeah, it's tough to look at, and I apologize, but it's there. I don't know how many people I know that have pierced tongues, and if you got one, I'm not picking on you, but I'm just saying. Pierced tongues, uh, noses, eyebrows, lips, they're, they're sticking, they're sticking uh, piercings and stuff you don't even want to know about. Okay? It's terrible. And this is, this is all about... Hurting yourself. Why would you do this unless you're hurting yourself? Right? It's interesting to me that we teach no, not to have jewelry at all. I, you know, I finally lost my wedding band. I was at work and it slipped off. And I couldn't find it for anything. And I was like, well, <laughs> I'm out of that. So I have no jewelry now. And I'm kind of glad about it. Now, that was what's happening in our society. Guess what? It's not new to us. We didn't come up with the idea. This is a, I believe he's a Buddhist monk, but I'm not positive. And he's actually inserted a steel rod through his mouth in a way of, you know, showing his reverence to their gods, to their whatever they worship, right? They don't actually worship. Well, anyway. Uh, so we see a similarity, don't we? And this is all coming from who? Satan, right? Look at this guy. Oh, some of this is... If you want to turn away, I don't blame you. This, he's having all kinds of stuff. And this is all to, you know, to, to show their, their love for something? Why? God doesn't ask us to do this, does He? This guy on the... Uh, let's see, that would be... <laughs> the guy with the numbers on his lip. I would say right and left, but I get that mixed up. So, The guy with the, num uh, the numbers and all over his face tattoo, he's actually a gang member. I don't know if you guys realize this, but Hispanic gangs are known for having tattoos, full body tattoos. Okay? Gangs. Now, do you think gangs are Christian? No, they're not Christian, are they? In no way are they Christian. They're killing each other over what?